going, Josh? Do you know what's popping? This is called the Wolf of Charles Street podcast. Charles Street is um, a major street in Baltimore that uh, divides the city between east and west. Oh, you got you you got some. Hey, you want to take a shot? What well, you know? Why we start? Yeah, I got something. Hold on. Uh, I've got the cap strength. I got this one. Okay, I got the California Oak. Oh. California. Yeah. Hey, you yeah. that one. <laughs> nah, not not not, not just me. Not not just not just me. <laughs> I've been I've been taking yeah, it. Here. I've been taking around my uh my podcast and my, my podcast guests and they've been abusing it. Have <laughs> they been enjoying it? Man, it's man. Like all it. the reviews is terrific. Even even with me, like I'm not really a. A dark whiskey drinker, but this is smooth and it and it lasts. It's a lasting smooth. You feel me? So, cheers. Cheers, man. Cheers, cheers, cheers. <sighs> yeah. Woo. 115 proof at one o'clock. Not bad. Woo. Well, you know it's uh. Oh yeah. Four o'clock over <laughs> Easter time. <laughs> Yeah, everybody, it's a everybody about to get off of work. I got water. So, um, so you know, this is a a business cultural platform. So you know, I, I was on the active on the active search for looking for you know a beverage brand, you know the you know the sponsor, and I came across your brand, and I reached right out, and you guys reached right back. You know, sent yeah, sent we'll over yeah, yeah, sent over some samples. And I said, you know what? Yeah, these guys, these guys on top of their business. So I, I'm gonna just break down Baltimore, Maryland. Like it's 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 a liquor store on damn near every corner. So like liquor is ingrained in the culture. So like, you know, since a kid okay. you know, I just see the final product, but I've always wanted to know the process you feel me so i'm glad i'm here to have you here so just break down your background because we're here now with seth he's one of the the co-founders the owners so break down your background give me a little background of your childhood and what formed you into getting to, into this industry my childhood well i i, I gotta say it's refreshing uh to be on a business podcast because most of the ones i do are industry related so i do a lot of beverage podcasts with folks that drink whiskey or drink spirits and that generally is the you know a lot of technical questions about how it's made and all that so this is this is refreshing um yeah, so i'm i'm seth benheim i'm 35 years old born in 1988 I was born and raised in San Francisco. Uh, my father was a med student at UCSF, um, and he met my mother at UC, uh, UCSD down in San Diego, and I now live in LA, so kind of like all different parts of California, north to south, uh, it's kind of where my families come together. And, you know, nothing really too influential about San Francisco as it relates to this business and my career, but um, moved to LA, grew up there, high school, all that, went to Arizona for college, came back to LA in 2011, at the end, like this time, right around this time, like Thanksgiving, uh, got a job offer to work with my uncle, but during college, I was very entrepreneurial. I started kind of like side hustling and making money when I was 19. My parents, uh, God bless them, they, they paid for college. So I didn't have any student loans, I was very fortunate. Uh, and they said, we're paying for you to learn, so you don't need to work. Uh, which is kind of the opposite experience for I think most people. 
And I didn't listen. I, I went straight to it and I started creating creating opportunities for myself to make money. And I was very good at online marketing. And so I was basically selling stuff online. I was selling furniture, you know, I was selling speakers, I was selling um, TVs, a lot of like uh, electronics. I was selling, um, and it got to a point where I was actually getting like decent sized companies. Like I was in Tucson, Arizona, and there was a company there called Tierra Antigua Realty, the biggest real estate company in, in the city of Tucson. And huge, like millions and millions of dollars. And they actually had meetings with me and I got some of their agents to list properties in those sections of like Craigslist. So my whole thing was Craigslist advertising. And it got to a point where I was literally like, as a joke, my dad was a doctor, so my business was called Dr. Craigslist. <laughs> and then that kind of like evolved into Craigslist. I keep it here. I keep, you gotta see this, but- The motivation. My very first business license okay. from the state of Arizona. Motivation. And it's for Craig, Craig Masters was the next name of the business. And then I eventually started doing like Facebook marketing and that was coming up. And Facebook was becoming a bigger thing. So I got into that and then and I actually got a cease and desist from Craig saying I broke every single rule in the terms of use when you sign up for an account. Cause I was running I was running like at a million miles a minute, man. I was doing yeah, you know, just not to be technical, but like you can't post an ad from India or Pakistan in Tucson, Arizona. You have to physically be in Tucson because they check the IP address of where you're logging in on the internet. So what I did was I figured out how people in Pakistan and India could use a keyboard and mouse for a computer that wasn't in Tucson. And so I got a whole bunch of computers and then I plugged them all into this one keyboard and mouse and different people from India and Pakistan 24 seven, we were sleeping, they were working kind of thing and the ads would go up and the ads would go up and it was like, it was crazy. We had every ad in Tucson from like 2009 to like 2011. It was all me and I was making money. I, I put some money away. We, we, my parents and I went in and bought a house together. So that was kind of like where it began. That was like my first business ever. So I don't know if that answers the question. Uh, so, but, so, <laughs> so, so what led to you getting into the business because that like that that business that you went is a, a infamous business man <laughs> like it's an infamous yeah, business in, in american totally history different. yeah and it's, and it's totally different i mean that's just my backstory that's my that's like my little bit of history but yeah no i um from there when i one of those years in college when i was making money one of the things i did was i ran over to the liquor store and i took like i got six hundred dollars that summer I took all six hundred dollars and I bought. I filled the shopping cart with every kind of. I got rum. I got gin. I got tequila and whiskey, and I got yellow liqueur and red and green and blue and all that. And I would. I mean, we we built a room in our fraternity, and I would just make drinks for people. I was really into it. So I was, you know, I thought I thought maybe I'd be go and be a bartender. You know, I thought that might be the path I might end up on. So I was really into it, really, really into it. And I even made money doing that. People would give me tips, like for making them drinks at a fraternity where the drinks are free. So, you know, it's just crazy. Um, and then a little bit after college, I saw my brother was doing this thing where he was taking fruit and infusing vodkas in these mason jars. Okay, for and I said, oh, that's really cool. That's really awesome. Like, I want to try that. And then my brain always goes to, okay, how do we make money? So I'm like, well, is anybody doing a brand where there's fruit in the bottle of the liquor? And it turns out there was very few, if any. And so I had this concept to do um, these infusions. And so I had a brand, this, the, the whiskey brand is new. That's only two years old, really. Um, but for the last nine years before that, I was making vodka. So we have a vodka brand that's still out today. It's called Infused Spirits. And we basically do these infusions where we take like lemons and oranges and grapefruit and cinnamon, apple, mango, habanero, and we put it in the bottle. So we actually put the fruit down the neck of the bottle and we have these recipes that are 
shelf stable, so they don't expire, they don't go bad. And we have this, you know, we're very innovative with the, the concept. And now that liquor is in 40 states. Um, the whiskey is in 40 states plus Canada. Mm. Uh, we're launching the vodka this month in Alaska. Like it's crazy. So it's all over the country. All right, for uh, um, for 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 one, right quick for beginner drinkers, what's the difference between whiskey, vodka, and say tequila? Okay, so there's there's basically, and this is wildly uh, dumbed down, but uh, tequila is made from agave, which is you know grows in the ground, it's a plant or a vegetable. Um, vodka can be made from anything. It can be made from pineapples, can be made from corn, anything with sugar. You can actually even make a vodka with agave if you want to call it that. Um, whiskey has to be made from a grain, a uh, cereal grain, so rice, corn, wheat, rye, uh, malted barley, um, quinoa, any kind of cereal grain that will grow, that is how you make whiskey. Brandy, we made from fruit, and I'm missing one, gin, which is basically flavored vodka, but it has to have juniper in it. It's a some level to make it a gin. Um, and there's a million more categories, but those are the five big ones you see in the liquor stores. Yeah, that's when I was on the site, I was looking at all the different like flavors, like, and I also see that you are, are award winning. So like, what sets you, what sets your brand apart from all the other liqueurs? Um, well, our vodka brand is set apart because we are one of the few and leading um, infused vodkas on the market, and we do it by using real fruit, not flavoring, and we're a single bottle infusion, so every single bottle is individually flavored versus you know, something that's done in a tank or, or something that's done in a big batch. Like we do it individually, bottle to bottle to bottle. So it's very innovative in its nature and all that. Um, and it's not artificial. We don't add any chemicals or any like sugar or anything. So it's all very, very um, fresh tasting and doesn't taste like perfume or smell like the perfume. And then on the whiskey side, broken barrel whiskey, which is big, what we both have in front of us. That's how we got uh you know connected uh broken barrel whiskey the newer project so i am all the entrepreneurial all the experience in the industry all that aside i'm i'm something of a whiskey expert so i i, I deal in whiskey so i'm gonna show you something with my camera here wow all right that's pretty much all whiskey wow. and then go this way and there's more <laughs> wow. a lot more <laughs> a ton more it's on the floor in boxes. It's over here on the side, it's everywhere. It's a lifestyle. So it's I, a lifestyle. I'm, I am. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's just listening to this podcast and they can't see. I've got a room, floor to ceiling, with uh, 2,000 different bottles of whiskey from Japan, so, you know, uh, Ireland, the Netherlands, Australia, Taiwan, <laughs> you name it. I've got Mexican whiskey. I've got whiskey from all over the planet. And I love it. I'm very, very big into whiskey and pretty much barrel aged spirit. So rum, brandy, whiskey, anything that goes into a barrel, I am acutely interested in and find myself researching and studying and all that. So that makes me somewhat of an expert. I mean, we did win with our broken barrel brand. We won the most innovative whiskey in the country, 2023, from the World Whiskey Awards. And then we won the best Kentucky finished uh, bourbon uh, same year, 2023. And so all that we do with Broken Barrel whiskey is we take whiskey from a few different relatively big companies and we blend their whiskey together. And then we take the barrels uh, of other kinds of, of alcohol. So rum barrels that had rum in them most recently wine barrels that had wine in them we've done beer barrels i've got barrels from japan i've got barrels from spain barrels from mexico barrels from all over the planet and we source them and then we break them down and combine them with each other so different types of barrels and we use those to add additional flavor layers of complexity 
Sometimes it'll change the sugar content or the viscosity of the whiskey. And for that, I think people recognize it was so impressive to do that because a lot of people like to blend different whiskeys and win awards for that. We blend different barrels and then apply those barrels to the whiskey in a creative way. If you look at our social media, you see us with like sledgehammers and axes. That's our whole thing. So you can see like we've got, you know, our name and the axes and all that kind of (laughs) stuff. You know, we're running around with these go to trade shows and hammers and it's just a cool brand. It's a very fun brand. It's not your, you know, it's not like a traditional thing. It's new. So 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 right quick, just I wanted to just digging a little bit deeper into the the barrel. So what the the flavor is in what in the in the wood in the barrel that that gives it the different flavors yeah well if you think about like it's kind of like the concept of tea Mm -hmm. so if you take you know warm water and you dip a tea bag into it it, all the flavors of what's in that tea will start to expel into the liquid and it'll become this new thing um you can call it an infusion you can call it uh, a finish you can call it whatever you like a maceration um, whatever you want to call it, what we're doing is we're steeping these pieces of wood that had a certain type of liquid in them as a barrel, and we're using that to actually steep uh, flavor into a new um, uh, uh, blend of whiskey. And so that's, that's where the flavor is coming from. Is the, the, the wood itself has a flavor, and then the content that that wood held previously also have a flavor. Right. And in, com- in combination, that alone will add something to the whiskey it's touching. But then when you combine wine barrels with bourbon barrels, with you know new barrels or, or rum barrels, the combination of those different flavors all at the same time gives it a whole new it doesn't taste like other whiskey it starts to taste like its own thing and i love that like that's for me it's i don't want to put more stuff into the world that doesn't um change anything or or do anything new for anyone so at least with our stuff it's not going to taste like everyone else's that's a fact this is smooth yeah so you um you say you're in 40 states is maryland one of the states you in we are, we are. We should have some stuff in Maryland. I think we've had some issues more recently with some of our distribution out there. Okay. Um, you know, our distributor ended up selling a few of their state distribution, and we're closing them all together. So I think Maryland happens to uh, be one of those states that we are in between distributors. So we're just trying to figure out. In, in this country, you have to have you have to have a distributor by law. We don't have a choice, so we can't just go into the market with cases of booze in our car and sell it to a liquor store. We have to sell it to a big company with a big warehouse, right. a fleet of trucks, and a team of salespeople, and then go out and sell it on our behalf. But yeah, it's not a it's not a free for all. We can't just like go online and sell it anywhere. Right. You know, there's a lot of rules we have to follow with alcohol. Well, you know, we, we'll hold you down over here on the East Coast till you you sort sort everything down. You feel me? <laughs> We got you. We'll keep you uh, all in front of the cameras on the social medias, man, because it's definitely a, um, a great product, man. I really enjoyed it. And I enjoy talking to you, Seth, man. You get, you know, you educated me in these, you know, in, this, in a short amount of time, you know. But you know, I hope we are able to, you know, just build a relationship. Because, like I said, I came across you because I was actively searching for a sponsor for the podcast network. So. Hopefully we can talk some things into fruition and, you know, we make it happen, man. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, I appreciate you having us on and, and talking with me about the brand and anything I can do to, you know, educate on business or any of that stuff. Uh, just, just shout out, man. Let me know. Yeah, man. Definitely going to have a part two coming, oh. man. Thanks for having you, man. Of course. Man, like, subscribe, make sure y'all follow all our shows on social media, everything, man. Support where you at, network. Man, thanks for another show, man. We out. Ah, uh, damn. I'm hungry now. Why
be hungry when you can have a smack and good time, my brother. Jesus. Got your nice serving and turf. Steak and a crab. And a crab and shrimp egg roll. Smack and good kitchen. Damn. Smack and good kitchen. Damn. Let me dip this right now, bro. I ain't even going to wait for him, man. I've been shooting all day. Yeah. Should have hit me earlier. Could have had this while you were shooting. Damn. Bro, give them your Instagram again. My Instagram is smacker underscore good underscore kitchen. Looking for some good eats, all type of egg rolls. You can have a smacking good time. Man, the official kitchen for where you at network, man. My God. Appreciate you.